Blackhawks fans, welcome to yet another episode of the Blackhawks Hockey Central Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Vitale, along with my co-host, Skokes. And today we're going to be talking about some general news in the free agent world of the NHL. Uh, there's been some uh, ARB hearings that have uh, concluded and uh, some guys have gotten their money. But there's also some guys who have a dramatic difference to what they're asking and what the team is willing to give. Uh, in the Blackhawks news, the prospects uh, are going crazy. They're going nuts. Uh, specifically mm-hmm. Frank Nazar, and we'll get to that. We'll give you the specifics. And then uh, the Wirtz Corporation has made a large purchase. We'll get to that as well. Uh, Dom Lecision uh, of The Athletic, he ranked all teams and how their contracts are based on efficiency. Spoiler alert, Chicago Blackhawks are number 32. <laughs> so uh, we'll go over that a little bit, uh, see how it goes and uh, why they might be 32, just not from uh, Dom, but also from us because we're the experts. So uh, we're going to start off with uh, Cat Friendly. Mm-hmm. And um, so some, some restrictive free agents that have signed since the last time uh, we, we talked so I believe we got to Zach Benson, Jack McBain, and Kevin Ball. Uh, I I believe it was just Zach Benson, and then just um, Zach Benson. yeah, and then Jack McBain signed uh, yesterday. So yeah, on the thirtieth we ended <laughs> right. So Jack McBain one point five and nine 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 nine. They just couldn't give him that extra dollar. Um, college free agent signing. His rights were originally held by Minnesota Mm -hmm. uh, and then traded to uh, the Arizona Coyotes. Yeah. Um, He's a hard-nosed player, two-way guy, bottom six, middle six, maybe, middle six ceiling. Mm -hmm. Um, He'll he'll run you through and um, try and score a goal. Um, Yeah. You know, centerman, so lots of responsibility in the center position. Mm-hmm. And um, he, was on a, he was on a bad team in the uh, Arizona Coyotes, but they had the opportunity to give him a chance to play. He played. He earned mm-hmm. himself another contract. That's awesome. Yeah. I uh, He did have some um, ice time last year, and he's not a flashy player, right? But not at all. Six, six foot four. 218 pounds, 23 years old. That's a big one. Um, right. And and he's not a major contributor on the stat sheet, but whenever I'm tuning in to um, some Arizona Coyotes like news and rumors, right, I'm always hearing the name Jack McBain. Like that's the one name that's standing out, and I didn't know who he was until like this off season, right. Um, when they got the uh, deals done, but he's an interesting player, definitely at six, four and, you know, uh, being so young, uh, there's some promise there, uh, for a middle six role, uh, bottom six, you know, possibly like if he just carves out like a perfect, perfect role. Um, little David camp action. Yeah. David camp. Uh, if he could stick like playing center, Hey, that's a that's an interesting player to uh, keep around for the for the Coyotes. Definitely, yeah, I, I think that's a good one. I mean, they're mm-hmm. like you know they need they need pro players, right? And he is a pro player, no doubt. Uh, mm-hmm. So good for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so then we'll move on to Kevin Ball. Now, Kevin Ball, this is a little interesting tidbit. He actually came from the Arizona Coyotes in the Taylor Hall trade. Wow. So um, he is six foot eight. Um, really? Spent the most most of his time, I want to say, with the Ottawa 67s. Mm-hmm. And um, he carved himself out a role in the postseason uh, with the New Jersey Devils. And so mm-hmm. 
um, they were, you know, the New Jersey Devils, they were able to uh, get rid of, not get rid of, but, um, you know, uh, Damon Severson. Yeah. He, he did Long a time devil. Trade. Long right. time devil. Mm-hmm. He did a sign and trade, went to Columbus. Um, Ryan Graves went to, he signed a big ticket, long mm-hmm. ticket. Yep. Um, in Pittsburgh. And right there, those are two of your top guys, pretty much. I, that might even be their top pairing. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, it wouldn't have been with with Dougie Hamilton. Right. But you know, you're losing two guys that are roster players that are making a difference every day in the lineup. So Kevin Ball comes up, and he's able to make that transition from the AHL to the NHL, and he's sticking around. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, he's more of a rough and tumble type, mm-hmm. you know, six, eight with that type of size. That's you pretty much, you got to do it. Um, yeah. And, and also, uh, similar to Jack McBain, only 23 years old. Um, uh, and he already has that experience that the devil's, um, you know, they got pretty deep last year uh, in in the playoffs. And hey, that's if if he could be a, a third pair guy on their back end, that's completely fine. You know, as as long as he's responsible in his uh, D zone, uh, cheap contract, twenty three years old, like we mentioned. Uh, that's a nifty little contract there for for the Devils. No doubt. I see him kind of like uh, Jared Tenorti, a 23-year-old right. right. Jared Tenorti, pretty mm-hmm. much. Exactly. Uh, that's the type of style he's going to play. He's going to be in that bottom pairing role. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on, we've got a Jesse Yelonen. Yolo- mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, say that five times fast. Yeah. Montreal Canadiens, six foot one, 188. He is 23 years old. If mm-hmm. 23 is the magical number. Mm-hmm. Blink 180s, you might say that nobody likes you when you're 23, but these guys are getting six figures, high six figures, almost almost seven figures. So yeah, uh, someone likes them. He's from Scottsdale, Arizona, also, which is kind of strange. Yep. Jesse Yelonen, Yelonen from mm-hmm. Finland. Yep, Finnish. Uh, interesting name. I Could be an interesting player. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah. Have not heard of him. Uh, seems like he, he can be that jumping player, right? Whether he's in the uh, um, American League or if he jumps up for some you know time in the uh, NHL with the Habs because uh, they're obviously trying to figure out something there in yeah. Montreal. And, and, and they, had, they ran into so much injury trouble last season. Right? So that's why you see 37 games last season for him. Wow. In the NHL and then 39 in the AHL. And wow. he was he was 39 games, 32 points. So he's not he's not he's not too like shabby, worth, no. Worthless, you know. Yeah. That, that's a player. Mm-hmm. And you know, 16 points for 37 games in the show. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're on the Montreal Canadiens, dude. They're same thing as the Blackhawks almost. They didn't they didn't strip strip it down to the studs like the Blackhawks did, but they're mm-hmm. in a full blown rebuild. Mm-hmm. And they've right. they've got Marty St. Louis. He's never coached anything besides like Bantam. Mm-hmm. You're right. And, and you know, I mean, was he he was a great player, so he can rely on that. And he's big lead by example guy. And he's mm. he's very fit and he's still got the touch. He could probably he could probably go for eleven minutes a night. Yeah. Fourth line role. Exactly. In the show. So mm-hmm. you know, uh this is you know, if he's carving himself out in I don't know if he's going to carve himself out a starting role. Mm-hmm. Um, he's definitely bottom six. Yeah. Uh, caliber. Um, mm-hmm. He didn't have any pims when he was up in the big leagues. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had 16 pims while he was half a pim per game. So he's not fighting. He's not hitting. He's not slashing. He's not taking stupid penalties. Mm-hmm. Just a, He's just a guy who plays pro hockey. Yeah, and that's good enough, right? That's Definitely. that's good enough. Um, and a name we've heard before, you know, uh, not much, but Nick A Abruzzese, yes, uh, with the Toronto Maple Leafs. 
uh, 24 years old, two way contract. So that makes sense. Um, He's a Harvard kid. Yeah, right, Which right, right. Which I find very, very interesting. Right. Still playing pro puck and you went to Harvard. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so two, two-way two contract, obviously, obviously because they're uh, loading up their current roster as much as they can um, with the cap implications, which is also pretty tricky, uh, that – that we touched on before, but full fledged disaster. <laughs> yep. It's, uh, it's, it's a tricky one, you know, but Hey, uh, have at it. Abra's easy. Have at it. Yeah. I, um, in, uh, on, on Twitter, I would, I, I did a, a trade proposal for the, um, the trade deadline mm-hmm. that involved the Leafs and the Hawks. Um, this is before Jonathan Taves said that he wasn't going to be able to play and he's not going to put himself out there to be traded. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had Nick Abruzzi included in that because he's like a he's like a point per game, a little bit over a point per game, I think, in the AHL. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's a center left wing, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And um, here we go. OK, you know, he's not quite a, a point per game in the AHL. Mm-hmm. Uh, he played 69 games, nice, and uh, 48 points, and then uh, seven games in the playoffs for seven points. So he's got a little bit of ice in his veins, and mm-hmm. uh, I just think he's a good player, and I think the Hawks could have used him, but uh, they got Joey Anderson instead, which is yeah. a fine by me. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, Abruzzi, he might get um, he might get some time with the big club as we said about the, all those cap issues, you know, there, as it sits right now, even with uh, Matt Murray LTI retired, right. Uh, $2.068 million mm-hmm. uh, above the cap. So, you know, in that bottom six, they're going to need skill guys. I think Nick Ebruzizi is skilled enough to be able to play there. Mm-hmm. By the way, that Kevin Ball contract was $1.05 million coming yeah. off of his ELC. I want to say, Mm-hmm. Uh, so we got a little bit of a bump up because now mm-hmm. he's going to be that roster player. Uh, Yolonen, uh, mm-hmm. 775. Ebruzizi, 775 as well. Yep, definitely. Um, and the most intriguing uh, player that we we were all pretty much wondering about, you know, uh, until uh, today, which is Philip Gustafson. Uh, goalie for the Minnesota Wild you got on it. on a three year contract, uh, one way, of five. course, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now they're they've got seven point seven five, I believe, is what I said, in mm-hmm. locked up in the goaltending uh, with Mark Andre Fleury, obviously a uh, Blackhawks legend, mm-hmm. and um, you know when you're spending seven point seven five million dollars on your uh, on your goaltenders, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, you're probably going to have Philip Gustafson be the starter at 3.75. Yep. And then you'll have uh, Mark Andre at 3 million as a backup, which is kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. But, you know, maybe they, maybe they just do a true tandem and they do like a, you know, like a 40, 41, 41, mm-hmm. or maybe like a, a 50 and a 30. Mm-hmm. Or something, you know, something along those lines. They could, they could uh, switch switch it up. Uh, mm-hmm. Philip Gustafson, I I really think that with this signing done, I think a lot of shoes are going to drop. Uh, I think so too. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of people were kind of keeping their eye on this, making you know, oh, can can Minnesota afford him? Mm-hmm. Uh, and if he can't, do we offer sheet him, or do we just trade for his rights? And you know, because that's probably a better, more economical option where you're probably going to give a what, fifth round pick just to, so you can negotiate with them a third round pick, whatever, no skin mm-hmm. off, you know, off your back. And uh, so I think it's a really good deal. I think mm-hmm. it's a little bit under market value. I think mm-hmm. you're probably looking for him probably like in the five and a half range. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause he's, he, he, uh, Ultimate, he used his ultimate ability last season, I think. Yeah. He, he was awesome. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, he he definitely showed uh, the team and the league right uh, that that he can do this as a starter uh, uh, with with quality starts right like even going going into the playoffs uh, he could handle um, you know like playoff hockey and hey that's great to see um, and we mentioned. Um, we might see some some moves possibly come in here in in the near future, possibly this week, even with a uh, goaltending, because another player that uh, went through arb- arbitration uh, with Boston is Jeremy Swayman. Uh, Love that. Love right. that player. And and the team filed for two million, right? Um, player. Obviously, filed for a little more at four point eight. Um, yeah. So that's it's an interesting contract, uh, definitely interesting one. Yeah, I was I was listening to the Drop of the Gloves podcast and uh, mm-hmm. their co-host over there, Tim Wordsberger, John Scott, the other one. Um, Tim Wordsberger is a he's from the Boston area and he's a diehard Bruins fan. He he wants. Swayman over Allmark. He thinks that the Bruins can sacrifice mm-hmm. Linus Allmark and then sign Jeremy Swayman. Wow. Um, I think I I love the player. I love the player. I don't know if you could just throw him into uh, a starting role. Mm-hmm. You know, right. four point eight million dollars is starter money. Mm-hmm. It's getting towards starter money at least. I think you probably want five, five two five, maybe five five, for your starter. But um, you know, I don't. I think he got in a little bit of injury trouble as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I would be a little bit hesitant. You know, now if you if you traded Linus Allmark and you got some guys who can really play in like your top six, middle six, because mm-hmm. they lost Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci, Taylor Hall, Nick Foligno. Not that Nick Foligno was a top six or even a middle six guy, but um, they need players and they've signed some guys for cheap. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, maybe you, you trade a line of Allmark and you get a good, uh, well, you know, good contract, good player, cheaper deal. And then you can get Trent Frederick, who we're going to move on and talk about him as well. Mm-hmm. They're just a little, little bit off on on him. So, you know, um, I'd like to, you know, you're getting up in over $10 million for the Boston Bruins for their goaltending tandem. Mm-hmm. And they've got great synergy, great chemistry. I think they're buddies off the ice, to be honest. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you know, goalie, goalie league, um, goalie, you know, uh, goalie group, goalie team. Um, mm-hmm. they, they are always together, the goalie guild. And, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I see $4.8 million as a reasonable, as a reasonable get. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say the Bruins have $5.4 million left. Mm-hmm. So that would eat pretty much all of it, and you wouldn't be able to sign Frederick. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you if you trade Allmark, you're going to solve that problem mm-hmm. partially. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned Fre- uh, Frederick, right? Uh, Trent Frederick. Uh, so the arbitration numbers, uh, the the team was looking for two years at one point four million, and the player filed for one year at. 2.9 million. So I I mean that's a that's a pretty big difference in money. Um so he he's just looking for a bunch of action going on. Yeah, uh he's he's looking to get a little a little quick cash, you know, one year just quick cash. And we got Yeah, we we got to say also so with the the salary cap staying flat because of the pandemic Right. Um, you're going to see a lot of these guys asking for one million, one, sorry, one year contracts because they want mm-hmm. the, the cap is going to go up allegedly next year, mm-hmm. like four and a half to six and a half million dollars. I want to say yep. it's kind of a big jump. And then the year after, I think they're 
like it's even going to go up even more. It might even go up by like nine mil. I thought I saw, mm-hmm. wow. which is absurd. Yeah. Um, so the money is going to be pouring in because of those ESPN TNT de- deals. And, um, you know, a lot of these guys are just going to be like, Hey man, you know, one year, larger money because of that one year, the term, mm-hmm. you know, teams give the term to lower that AAV. And so he wants a payday. Honestly, I think he's, he's earned it. I would, mm-hmm. I, Three mil is a little steep for Trent. Fletcher, yeah, right, right. Because uh, he's he's a middle bottom six type guy, but he plays with jam. He yep. sticks up for his teammates. He crashes the net. He stirs the pot. I think it's a he's a valuable player to that team. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, yeah, he's just that that grinder. Uh, whether it's in middle six or the. Uh, uh, bottom, uh, bottom line, fourth line, uh, role, but yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see what Boston does does with that contract. And moving on to the final um c- contract here, uh, probably the most controversial one that we've seen this off season, yeah, possibly the largest difference, right? Yeah, now. the largest uh, with Anaheim. And Troy Terry, uh, so they made their arbitration submissions. Uh, the team was offering around five, um, four point five million, and the player filed for eight million. Anaheim is high, straight up. Yeah, that is a that's a low ball, and that's it. Like that, that's just like straight up insulting at that point. Yeah, because I mean Troy Terry's still a young player right and yes. he and he had a great season not not just this last season but he he really started uh like coming on here the last two seasons um so he's asking for eight million and they are obviously way out, out of his range yeah, um, no more Corey perry no more ryan gets laugh mm-hmm. uh Cam Fowler is a little on the older side. Troy yep. Terry is their guy. He is their star. Mm-hmm. Now, Goal scorer, he, right? Yeah. Is, is he an Austin Matthews? No. Is he Kyle Connor? No. But he is Anaheim's star. Mm-hmm. He wants to get paid like a star. He deserves it because he's performing like a star as well. His stock is rising, rising, rising. Right. And, you know, is is 8 mil a little high? I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would think him more in maybe like the six, we'll call it six, seven. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. If you want to go like a full term, maybe like six, one. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, I I, th- I think he's he's in that high sixes, maybe even low sevens range. Mm-hmm. Eight, it's a little much. Um, right. And, uh, you know, that's and the thing is, uh, this is obviously the one that the Ducks want to get out of the way because mm-hmm. it's going to be the most expensive. They still have Trevor Zegras, Jamie mm-hmm. Drysdale, and Troy Terry. They have to they have to do three of their stars on this team. Yep, you know, Drysdale. It was I think his he got shut down early in the season for mm-hmm. with a separated shoulder, which is just so tough. Yeah. You hate to see a young kid who's thriving go down with an injury like that. Um, and then Zegris, you know, he's Showtime. He's the mm-hmm. face of their he's the face of their franchise. Right. Troy Terry might be getting all those goals and assists and all the points. Mm-hmm. But Zegris is the face of their franchise. Yeah. You know, he's on the NHL cover. He's doing all this, all this stuff when they have to advertise the team mm-hmm. he's there you know i saw mm-hmm. a while back he was serving i don't even know what this was for um there was a bunch of people who were having dinner on the ice at honda center mm-hmm. and he was like a waiter yep i uh, so saw that like, too yep you know you're when you're doing this stuff to market your team he's mm-hmm. there he's yeah. the guy you latch on to and you're not paying him right now. You, you don't have him under contract. Mm-hmm. It's just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Right. And 
you would think that they uh that's their main priority right is getting all those youngsters uh locked in here for you know the uh the bridge of of their their little um let's call it like an era right so yeah. so, so it's like an era of their bridge uh with with Drysdale um Zegris Terry obviously Leo Carlson is coming to the show um very oh, soon wow. right and, and it's going to be interesting with, with with them uh growing with Leo Carlson because uh that's a top 3 pick and is he going to work out we'll see uh that's going to be very in- interesting there with uh the Anaheim Ducks yeah, I'm really looking forward to see how that all plays out in the synergy they develop. Mm-hmm. So right. we can move on, and we're we're talking about contracts. We're talking about efficiency. Well, Dom Lecision at the Athletic has you covered. He ranked all 32 teams, and uh, I already spoiled the ending for you. 32 is the Chicago Blackhawks. We don't <laughs> have to spend a ton of time on this. I just thought it was funny, cool little exercise. Mm-hmm. You know, we're in off season mode. And um, I can, I'll show you the the one with the highest uh, efficiency, Taylor Radish. Mm-hmm. So Blackhawks are a D minus overall, and uh, Taylor Radish's contract. Uh, Dom's model gives him a three point two million dollar valuation. He's mm-hmm. he's getting uh, eight hundred thousand right now. Signed that with uh, Julian Breezebaugh back in Tampa Bay. So surplus value of $2.4 million, that gets a B plus. And uh, then the next on the list uh, in the positives is Ryan Donato. Just picked him up two years, $2 million each year. Mm-hmm. Um, the models got him $2.1 million. So... It's only a savings of 200 grand, which, mm-hmm. you know, to us here at the Chicago Blackhawks Hockey Central Podcast, 200 grand would be really cool yeah. uh, in the grand scheme of things for an original six franchise valued at over a couple billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Not so much. Um, and I would just, you know, Skokes, what do you, who do you have as a guess to mm-hmm. be the, the least efficient contract, the worst on the Chicago Blackhawks. The worst one has to be I know what everyone is going to think. They they're going to think it's Seth Jones, right? Yes. A- am I correct with that one? You are correct. Really? Because I was Jones. I I was thinking Nick Felino ju- just with the number that we did end up giving him, see, right? I could see that. I could see it. Right. It, in the in the forwards, they are no, no, the last is is Nick Felino, and then mm-hmm. the second to last is Corey Perry. <laughs> yeah, because from money alone, right? Yes. And what they're giving us, I think it is Nick Felino. Yeah. I mean that uh, that is uh, just an absurd amount of money for uh, what he is good, um, going to be doing with us, right? And Seth Jones has potential still, even though he is nearing uh, like his 30s, right? Uh, he's in his late 20s, but he does have some potential because of our bright prospects uh, that, uh, that are coming in. He's, he's an all-star. He's a number one. He's yeah. a number one defender in this league. Right. Uh, and, I, yeah. And and he has the chance to, to, to be here on his uh, – long long contract when we're back in it you know uh back when we're a good team and i think that contract's gonna look very nice three three to four years down the line here yeah and then you bring up bring up a great point i think with the prospects they're going to make him a better player Right. I also think I don't think he's getting a hundred percent right now because mm-hmm. uh, Blackhawks just tore it down to the studs. I mean, right. plain and simple, uh, they don't want to win. So why would he want to win? Yep. The only thing that I do question heavily is the fact that he's a big dude, and um, 
he has no professional fights. Not even one. Not one. Wow. Um, oh, oh, so okay. I think that's a little disappointing. And I think that yeah. kind of shows um, that he is really not trying. Um, yeah. Not, not necessarily maybe not trying, that he's mm -hmm. not, he doesn't have the heart. You know, he's not, mm -hmm. he's not connecting with the sport of hockey or with his teammates or with something. There's a right. connection that's being missed right there in which he's not willing to go the extra mile mm -hmm. to protect his teammates, stand up for them or whatnot. Right. And, and, and we're not asking Seth to be like a, uh, um, like a, let's say like a Brent Seabrook, you know, just straight up muscle at right. everyone. Right. But we, we need to see some passion there. I, uh, I, he has more mitts than, Right. I think CBZ did, you know, so like I think he's as a two way guy with that offensive upside. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not asking him to be Jared Tenorti and eat pucks and crush right. dudes and goon it up. You know, mm -hmm. I, that's not that's not his game. It's never right. has been his game. You know, it's not even like he didn't even give it, you a taste of that in the mm -hmm. juniors or whatever. So he showed that offensive prowess and I would like to him to use that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. but, a little more fire. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, you know, so uh, Dom's model, though, this thing, it does not take any prisoners. Mm -hmm. His model value, Seth Jones, that is, mm -hmm. $3.6 million. Yeah. Come uh, on, buddy. Come on. I mean, I could see why he put that relating to the current state of the Hawks, right? It's you know, true. just not, not a competitive team right now, but. You can't give Seth Jones less than six and a half, seven million dollars. I mean, right. he's just not going to take it. It's no. not going to work. He's a great first pair defenseman still. Yes, and he's not going to play for less than that. Yeah. Um, he's an all star. I mean, right. plain and simple. I mean, he's a two time all star now, and right. uh. It's just, uh, yeah, it's funny. And it, he was, it's yeah, funny. He, he was an all star when it mattered, you know. Right, right. Because last, I believe, last season he was voted in, and it was like, oh, everyone, all all the teams have to choose a player. Like, mm -hmm. dude, that doesn't. We're not asking for the team all star. We're asking for the all stars, the league. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. We want these. We want good players in mm -hmm. there. So, um, he was an all star when he earned it. And, um, yeah, so that's, that, that's that, you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, little fun, little off season exercise. Right. Uh, speaking of off season, mm -hmm. you got some tournaments going on right now. Yeah. The countries. So you got the Holinka Gretzky cup. We don't mm -hmm. care about that. No Blackhawks box books there. Nope. Uh, I was actually even looking at the names just to see if I could like recognize anyone. I didn't recognize anybody. So. I have no idea who those kids are. No, no. Um, good for them. They're playing for their country. Mm -hmm. Get on with it. Um, Frank Nazar, Team White USA, mm -hmm. just wrapped up a five-point night with four goals. Yep. Oh, it's just disgusting. Yeah, and uh, we retweeted, or sh should we say, like we we xed uh, some of the clips. We post it, reposted, re re reposted X. Uh, I X. guess that's what I guess that's yeah. what, what we're calling it now. But oh my god, um, what a disaster! Yeah, <laughs> yeah that uh, that whole story is for a uh, whole another day. But uh, whole another day. Yeah, so Frank Nazar five points um, tonight, uh, four goals, uh, one office skate. So a little luck, but hey, puck goes in the net, right? He was um, in the right place, right time. Right place, right time. That's what we call time. hockey IQ, folks. Hockey right. IQ. Uh, he, he had some impressive goals. Uh, two of his goals were snipes, you know, top corner, just ripping it. I mean, absolutely ripped it. Uh, so we reposted that on the account. Um, and also he had the deflection, right, off of the skate. And one goal was a 
uh, half ice breakaway. So he put a little move on the, the goalie there and a backhand roofed it. Uh, just just silky smooth, man. Frank Nazar, the third. Yeah. Yeah. Frank Nazar, the third, yeah. Right. Sounds like a king or something, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right, and Franklin, Emperor. Franklin Nazar. Yeah, and and always keep up with us on on uh, X or uh, Twitter. I'm just gonna keep calling it Twitter. Right, it's not the Willis Tower; it's the Sears Tower. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> Shy Blackhawks YT on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna be giving you some visuals, Chicago Blackhawks hockey content. Uh, you know, we got the Bedard practicing with some pros. Mm-hmm. We got Frank Nazar's five point night up there. Uh, Sam Renzel got himself a primary assist as well. Yep. Um, so he was doing really well. He's getting that pep puck up to the players so that they can go bury it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Oliver Moore also with a secondary assist, um, banking it up the boards to. Uh, fellow prospect uh gavin hayes which got it over to uh forgot his name but for a one-timer so oliver moore speeding down the ice drops it back for gavin hayes passes it off and you have a goal so that's good great to see yeah really from our prospects Mm -hmm. and i'd like to mention that well i've seen all the prospect guys just saying that Oliver Moore looks like an F1 car out there. Just yep. go, go, go. Mm-hmm. And I think it's worth mentioning that they had him on the wing, three left wing, which I think is a little low. I think yeah. they should probably bump him up to 2C, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It is Hockey Canada, so there's plenty plenty of people to pick from. Um, mm-hmm. So maybe it's just kind of, you know, like you've got like a, a Luke Robitaille on the fourth line type business, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mark Messier fourth line, like what? Uh, so yeah, because uh, Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, and are your first line. So You're right. Um, so and then they moved Gavin Hayes up as well from the fourth line right wing to Oliver Moore's line. Mm-hmm. Uh, get them some synergy, some chemistry building already right. uh, before they become teammates. Gavin Hayes three right wing, Oliver Moore. 3C. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you in hockey, you want your centermen to be better than the next line ups wingers. So, um, mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, Oliver Moore is probably better than those two left wing, two right wing. And so mm-hmm. that's why he's playing centermen on that third line. Center is where he belongs. That's where he's going to be at the University of Minnesota, just mm-hmm. tearing it up. And, right. Uh, Getting, um, getting those feeds from Team USA, Sam Renzel. Yeah, and I uh, forgot to mention there, uh, so Frank Nazar was uh, kept on the first line at 1C. So yes. he was uh, paired up with Jimmy Snuggerud, I believe, and um, I don't remember who his line mate was. Ryan Leonard, or did they change it up? Uh, they did change it up. So oh, okay. I think it might have been Perot, uh, ah. uh from the no. U.S. development program uh, team. Your Rangers pick, I want to say. Right. Um, so hey, he's he's playing with some great talent there on the first line, and obviously they they were buzzing. Um, today they were obviously buzzing. So Perot is a good player, and right. I think he I think he slid. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, low. Yeah, so so he was actually lined up with uh, Jimmy Snuggerud. Yep, so he's on the right wing, along with Isaac Howard, which we mentioned last time. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, right? Last last mm-hmm. pick ever, I think, of the twenty twenty two draft. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, they're flag. <laughs> yeah, so they're building some chemistry there, and uh, the 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 boys were buzzing versus yeah. Sweden. Yeah, that's really nice. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to shake up. All right, mm-hmm. So they have Team Blue and Team White, right? Mm-hmm. right? Are they going to like take the best players from each and then make a Team USA? Is that how that's going to work? Or is, I, this, 
or they're just they just split the team. Mm-hmm. This is a showcase. Everyone's having fun. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, mm-hmm. That would be interesting, definitely. Yeah, I'll um, I'll, I'll take a look at it for yeah. that, and then I'll get back to you, the, mm-hmm. the listeners. Right, definitely. And uh, I think we could close out the show here with um, a little Wurtz news uh, recently. Wurtz conglomerate. (laughs) Right. Yeah. and Wurtz Empire. Did you have the details on that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they they made a purchase, Mm -hmm. and that was for the the USHL's Chicago Steel team. Mm -hmm. So... If you guys remember, uh, they were in Bensonville at the Edge Ice Arena until yep. 2015 until Larry Robbins purchased them and then moved them up to Geneva. And they played out of the Fox Valley Ice Arena. Mm-hmm. Um, so, now, and, uh, you know, I want to say, I'm going to just skim this real quick. I don't think there's a dollar amount given. Mm-hmm. And this doesn't really mean too, too much in the grand scheme of things. You know, this isn't going to be the Chicago Blackhawks USHL team where they pick all those prospects from them. And, you know, oh, well, hey, well, we, you know, you can go from your AAA program to the USHL Chicago Steel and then we're going to draft you. You know, it's not really how that works. So, um, you know, I just think that, uh, you know, uh, there's a mention in here of, you know, Rocky, he'd like to, uh, he, he wanted to grow the game in the Chicago land area. And he definitely did he completely revived it and it absolutely exploded. Um, there's a lot of teams that have, you know, grown up, gotten in some have merged and whatnot. Um, so this is just keeping that message and growing the game. So now they've got the USHL and, you know, I'm just going to read off some statistics here from the, uh, the steel, because yeah. if you remember Owen power, number one, overall right. played for the steel, mm-hmm. which I, I don't, it's kind of weird to wrap my head around that. Yeah. Used to, you know, I used to go when I was like a kid, like a, a yep. young kid to go see the steel at the edge in Bensonville. Yep. Yep. Uh, same. So two time Clark cup champions, Mm-hmm. 287 USHL wins. That's the most. Mm-hmm. Um, they've, they had Adam Fantilli on the team. Yeah. He drafted third overall, and he won the Hobie Baker as a freshman. Mm-hmm. 16 NHL draft picks. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is since... Oh, that's just... Uh, uh, don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, 39 NHL draft picks since 2015. That's the one that you want to know. Yeah. 39 just from the Chicago Steel. That's really, that's really cool. very impressive. Um, yeah. Even looking back, right, at Owen Power, Adam Fantilli, and now top three projected pick, uh, Macklin Celebrini was also with the Chicago Steel. Um yes. I'm not sure if he's still going to play there this season or if he's moving on. Uh, uh, but he's moving on, I believe, to Boston University. Yeah, that that that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, but just to see like his development, right? Uh, just coming from the steel. I mean, this is this is impressive stuff, man. This is well, really big stuff. 160 NCAA Division One college commitments. Right. That's huge. 11 hockey staff have have advanced to the NHL organizations Mm -hmm. since 2015. Really Mm -hmm. good to see that they're not only are they developing these young kids, they're developing themselves Mm -hmm. and they're moving on. Right. Six head coaches of the Chicago Steel have gone to the NCAA. Wow. Tells you all you need to know. Yeah. And hey, it seems like if you want to make the NHL, you got to play for the, for the Chicago steel. That's I it. mean, it's, it's automatic. It's <laughs> automatic. I mean, that's just amazing, man. Uh, that that's great to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This has been a long one and I appreciate you guys listening to this. We mm-hmm. dropped a bunch of knowledge on you and, um, g- give us a shout out on uh, Twitter. Shy black, shy Blackhawks YT. Mm-hmm. 
and we'll get the conversation going. This is going to be on YouTube. Hit the comment section. Let's get a discussion going. But this has been the edition of Chicago Blackhawks Hockey Central Podcast. I am Joe Vitale. That is Skokes. Have a great rest of the week, guys. This is Monday. And, uh, yeah, go Hawks. Let's go Hawks. Let's go Hawks.